Good morning. How are you, Arthur? I'm just great. How are you? Very well, thanks. And uh, well, thanks let's, for uh, let you share your screen and uh, hear what you get to say. Very good. Well, thank you very much for having me today, Arthur. And thanks very much to Joy and Erica, who've been slaving away behind the scenes to make all of this possible. Now, I appreciate the kind introduction, Arthur. And I'd like to say there are a couple of things that Arthur didn't say about me. First is that I like a fine hat just as much as Arthur does. The other, a little more germane to the topic at hand, is that I grew up in a cabin in the woods without running water or electricity. And that might seem like an unlikely place to start a career in information technology, but we all had to start from somewhere to get on our journey that brought, it a, brought us here today to the Automated Testing Conference and Summit. And for me, that journey started in 1980 when we got the first home computer in the county and I wrote my first line of code and I was hooked. I knew I wanted to deliver great software solutions and I've done it continuously ever since. And what I see for us as leaders in information technology, as we are delivering more and more sophisticated solutions to help deliver the products and services of our organizations, we're being challenged to do a lot. In a software eats everything else world, technology teams are being asked to bring products to market faster, increase sales, differentiate and enhance their internal reporting. That's a lot to put on the plate. And as we do all that, we need to have a modern SDLC. And the thing I see that a modern SDLC is the heartbeat of digital software delivery. This umbrella of agile, DevOps, and product-centric methods are all there, and they need to be enabled by an integrated tool chain, included automated testing. However, for a lot of IT leaders, the latest technology has only compounded, at speed, the oldest problem we have in information technology, namely what to automate and how to automate it. Now, Automated testing, given we're here talking about today, might seem like the exception. And based on the numbers, and as a researcher, we always have numbers, the numbers look really good for automated testing. Almost 90% of organizations are doing some sort of automated testing, and over 75% have included that as part of the job role of testers in the organization. And so this is this looks really good on the surface of it. And when we look at the results, they're even better. Like we look here and see that you know 69% improvement in control and transparency of, tech, tech, of test activities, 65% reduction in test cycle time, and a 62% reduction in test costs. That all looks really good. Like it might be job done. However, when we look a little deeper under the covers, what we see in our research is that only a third of those organizations feel like they're getting a good return on their automated testing investment. There's a couple of key challenges we see there. Sometimes it's about the tools themselves. Automating, a, implementing a set of automated test tools is a start, but it's just the start. You need to have to do more. You have to build out that strategy around automation of your testing regime. You've got to build up cross-functional collaboration and other, a number of other things we're going to look at. And really the bottom line is automated testing is a complement to a strong QA or foundation, but it's not a replacement for it. And when we look at the numbers here, we start to see that the things get a little darker even. When we look at requirements test coverage, the numbers are all below 20%. Even despite all these people having it in their job description, test coverage remains incredibly low. And that's a real, challenge and it stems from a number of problems we look when we look at it and we've got to avoid some pitfalls when we get started we've got to look at avoiding local optimization like implementing an automated testing tool that alone is not going to build a good automated software delivery pipeline we have to stop thinking about testing as an afterthought testing has been at the back end of the sdlc for a long time and it's time for us to rethink that and we have to make sure that automated tests are regularly validated and maintained. That having automated tests means you now have an organizational knowledge product that you have to maintain and manage over time to ensure it continues to provide value. And so when we look at these numbers, I sometimes feel like the state of the art is an awful lot like this classic scene. But when we look at the state of the art in a little more detail, lots of organizations are starting to implement an integrated tool chain. And from the numbers we see from them, the problems continue to persist. We look at only about 8% of work, committed work is getting delivered in a reasonable time frame. Over 20% of the features that were intended to be delivered did, uh, got canceled during delivery. 
And a lot of product teams don't have any capacity to deliver new work for over a year. That's a long time to wait for a new feature to be inserted into the backlog. And 85% of product teams are under investing in security, compliance, and technical debt. And this is a check that you keep writing and it, it, it comes due every day now as we try to deliver software more quickly, but we're still with excellent quality. And the, the most painful part of all is almost 95% of teams have no idea what their end-to-end -end wait times to get work done. And so all this emphasis on tooling might be part of the problem. After all, the manifest, Agile Manifesto says, we value individuals and interactions over processes and tools. And that's partly the truth. Software alone isn't going to deliver software, but the people need to work together effectively to do that. But processes and tools are a part of that. The Agile Manifesto doesn't say instead of processes and tools, it says over processes and tools. And so when we look at enabling people to deliver successfully with technology supporting them, we have to take care of them. They're our most valuable capital assets and technology teams are a critical part of that value delivery engine of your organization. And so we have to make sure that we continue to develop them to deliver effectively. And when we look at that, we see three major steps to get that job done. The first one is it's time, long past time for us to reimagine the SDLC. The old way of thinking about how we deliver software isn't serving us well anymore. It's time to change it. Second, we've got to break free of the documents that are holding us back and testing documents are a big part of this. Tests that are buried in a Word document don't execute themselves. And that's a big barrier and a waste of time when you're trying to deliver better software faster. And we need to be smart about where we talk target automation and optimization of our SDLC processes. Because if you reduce something that's not actually the bottleneck in the process, you actually jam up everything else around it. What we're gonna see with some of the other speakers today from RBC and Woodman Life is how they took a holistic approach to tackling the testing automation challenge. So when we look at this at Infotech, we have a, a buzzword we've coined called Optimate. And that's that combination of optimization of the process and automation to recover capacity that people can use for higher value activities. And the two go hand in hand. If we think about it, the optimization is the cake and automation is the icing on top. As uh, Bill Gates said, the first rule of any technology used in business is that automation applied to an efficient operation will magnify the efficiency. The second is that automation applied to an inefficient operation will magnify the inefficiency. And that's the last thing we can afford to do. So as we go to that first step and think about optimating how we deliver, we really need to reimagine the SDLC. And as it was laid out in 1970 by Dr. W.W. W. Royce, he laid out what we classically think of as the waterfall software delivery method on the right-hand side here as that first step. But what he said, if you read the second page of the article, and a lot of people didn't, is that while I agree with this approach in principle, in practice, I find it risky, and prone to failure. And that doesn't bode well for any software delivery lifecycle. And one of the key things he says in his principles for making it work is that testing must be planned, controlled, and monitored throughout the delivery of the project. And he goes on to describe a more complex model that when you unpick it, looks an awful lot like iterative and agile software delivery. And we've evolved from that point. Better practices have embraced some of this iteration and agile delivery from the earliest days, but we continue to struggle. And even as we get into the world of agile DevOps and biz DevOps, we are still living with this world where testing is a late stage activity. We've separated it from development. We've separated it from every other part of the SDLC. And so despite having had a solution since the 60s, the way we visualize technology delivery at, and software delivery is we've still got it as a fundamentally linear process with testing happening late in the life cycle. And that's tragic because when we look at our data and the research we've done over the last uh, several years, we see that quality is at the center of a high efficiency SDLC. Uh, a, a high quality, uh, a quality centric SDLC drives a 73% improvement in throughput. It's a bigger driver of throughput through the SDLC than any other factor in information technology. And so this is a critical consideration as we think about that because quality isn't just doing things right. Are we building the right software the right way? It's also doing the right things as we do it, whether that's making sure we prioritize the most valuable things that we really understand the value of what's getting delivered. 
But a lot of the time we get trapped in this world where the quality happens late because of this linear thinking. And a lot of that depends on a, a relatively legacy way of how we think about the SDLC. And the swim lane models most of us have for our organizations are, are to describe their SDLC when we work with our members, we see that they're, they're still struggling with this late stage testing problem. And part of the problem is the swim lane itself. It, it was a state of the art process for defining how you delivered anything in 1940. But when use cases came along in the 60s, they redefined how we look at how human beings interact with technology. Because all software delivery is enabled by technology nowadays, we should start to think differently about how we model the SDLC. And so I'm gonna take a pass at that and draw a use case for delivering working software to play on that riff on the Agile Manifesto. And as we look at it, we have to wonder what's use case one for the Agile Manifesto, uh, for the software delivery lifecycle. And you may notice as you look at this that I've left testing out. I've done that on purpose because we often think about testing as being an activity that happens after we build software and maybe before we deploy software, but it continues to drive that late stage thinking about it. And when we think about what Michael Bolton likes to say about quality, well, not that Michael Bolton or this Michael Bolton, but Michael Bolton of Developed Sense, the testing guru, uh, he does say that you can't automate testing, which I think is him just being provocative. But he also says that testing is a lot of things. And I think that's a, perhaps one of the most important things to think about as we think about redefining how quality fits into the SDLC. Because when we look at the SDLC a little bit differently, we can see that testing occurs throughout the entire life cycle. We should be testing when we're intaking requirements, when we're managing and prioritizing the backlog, and so on and so forth as we move through. And what Michael Bolton goes on to say following that quote, uh, quote is something really, really important. Testing is, among other things, something that informs quality assurance, but is not in and of itself quality assurance. And that's the key. Quality assurance is tying all of those pieces together. So I agree wildly with this statement. This testing is a lot of things. And so if we put quality assurance is use case one of the SDLC, we finally have some glue to tie together what we're delivering. How do we ensure we deliver a quality product? It starts from intake and flows through the entire software delivery life cycle. That doesn't necessarily mean you should implement an automated testing tool first. Bear with me a moment because we've got to get through that step too. Lots of organizations are still writing testing documents as part of their quality assurance process. And we really need to stop doing that. When we look at highly effective digital processes, we see that they're data centric and they're 40% more efficient than a document driven process. And the people who consume the outcomes or use the process are 50% more satisfied with operating in a digital way. It's just plain better. And being data centric and driving a digital process doesn't necessarily mean you don't have a document but if you continue to use documents first you're putting data into a jail it's trapped and it can't come out it can't drive automation and so what we want to start to do is start to think about the artifacts that we build as part of the sdlc as being part of a data-centric model of software delivery think of the value stream as being one that's tied together by a stream of data that's connected from front to back that traceability thing arthur talked about earlier and so when we think about that, no matter whether you're agile or waterfall or somewhere in between, we look at the language, the requirements or product backlog items are really the building blocks for quality. Do you have good ideas? Are your business requirements or ethics high quality and well-defined? Do you have stakeholder requirements that are relevant and valuable to the organization? Do you, have you defined the right features and have you defined them well? And this new thing that came in from agile, the user story, are we having the right conversations? I think this is maybe the most critical thing for everybody to think about. When we think about the user story, we often think it's about a piece of software to be built. But as Dr. Alistair Coburn said, when he defined what a user story was, is it's a placeholder for a conversation. And in the context of quality assurance, it should be a conversation about test coverage. We need to be thinking about for every item flowing through the backlog, have we tested it? Do we have good coverage for what we're eventually gonna build out of it? You might call this test-driven development, but the key thing is, is whatever the process of defining your quality and testing standards, you're having conversations about quality, not at the end of the SDLC, but from the first day you begin to think about delivering a new software product.
because if we have those conversations, if we spend our time on the complex cognitive tasks required to ensure quality early in the life cycle, we'll be doing the right thing. And this is where automated testing is really critical and why manual testing isn't quality because time spent performing routine cognitive tasks like testing are a distraction from the more important questions of how do we ensure we're delivering a quality product, something that should be consuming not just our quality assurance people's time, but everybody on the team. And specifically, quality does not mean that software works as expected. We should always be looking to see, it does that software create the expected value? And of course, there's lots of tools to help us do that. And there's lots of software vendors who will convince you that their piece is the right one to implement first. But as we look at this latest technology and having to decide where to implement it, we see that there's a lot of noise in the market splits. There's a lot of technology. And the Object Model group, uh, Group's Methods and Tools platform team looked at this. And they looked across all 135 different STLC tools and found lots of people are trapped by brands. It's almost like they're a religion. And there's a lot of significant overlaps in features and functionality. But one of the key things is not all of them are there to drive quality. They're there to connect things. And the features are often captured in a vendor platform. And as we go and evolve and people keep pushing in the market, the complexity and the overlap keeps increasing. So it's easy to see how a lot of people get confused by where should they start. So when we look at this, we come to the mantra that we should target optimization and automation where it matters most. And so when we look at that quality centric SDLC where you test throughout, we really see there are four areas to prioritize in order. One is you want to start with the activities that create the greatest benefit for the most people. If you're going to have a, a collaborative process and you automate a piece that only helps one team, you're creating more work for everybody who has to collaborate with them. Having done that, you want to target the biggest bottlenecks in the software delivery lifecycle. Then integrate the best tools for the job. Because if software delivery is a competitive differentiator in the digital marketplace, which it most certainly is, you want to use the best tools to help yourself deliver the software. And last but not least, we have to work with our engineering teams. They have to have the liberty to engineer the product and the product line. And that doesn't mean you don't have standards, but they know best the product and the quality standards they need to deliver to. And as people implemented automa implementing automated testing and other SDLC tools, you have to work with the teams that are delivering to make sure they have the right tools for the job, they're integrated in the right way. And so as we pick away at this, Job one, as I said earlier, is not to implement an automated testing tool. If you haven't done something to glue together the backlog and create end-to-end -end visibility throughout the software delivery value chain, you're going to struggle to bring teams together to have them collaborate. Because if everybody's using different tools that aren't connected, you're going to always have that challenge. And so start by auto managing the backlog because it gives you the ability to visualize and have those conversations, build out the tests, the roadmaps, and all of the other things you need to do to deliver software effectively off the same sheet of music for everyone involved. And having moved through that, we can then get into the world of automated testing. The single biggest bottleneck in the software delivery lifecycle is manual testing. We've taken people's time and moved it to the wrong end of the life cycle. And so for organizations that are looking to get started, this is the place to start. And it's not as simple as turning on a tool, although that is a part of it. As we look at how people can turn up the throughput with their automated testing practices, you have to build a good foundation. You have to have a management structure in place and then know what your quality standards are. You've got to have testing tools that, uh, that fill the role you need to, that, and the things you need to test. You've got to orchestrate all those pieces. You have to configure them to work well. You have to build test data to, uh, to allow you to test against a high fidelity environment. Same with that test environment. It has to be a good high fidelity replication of production to really do quality testing. You've got to govern that to make sure people are doing the right things, to make sure they're maintaining and managing those uh, knowledge artifacts for testing that you're building over time. And you've got to make sure that all of this is secure because you might be working with real customer data. You might have to worry about the privacy and security about your non of your non-production systems the way you haven't in the past. And with those foundations in place, we can now get into the meaty pieces of it. And it starts with unit tests and code analysis and functional tests. These are great places to start to pull away some of that manual work of people banging on keyboards and get them thinking about how to build quality in the front end of the life cycle. And as you move beyond that stage, start to develop your practices by building component and component integration and build tests in. 
Look at regression testing so you can do start to do CI and CD uh, delivery more effectively. Look at multi-system integration tests as you mature your development, your testing practices, because ultimately every system is connected. Everything's going to change. And if you don't pay attention, particularly through testing, you don't know what's going to happen. And that can be problematic. And then to really get to that boss level, start to look at those penetration tests and vulnerability scanning, performance and throughput and capacity tests. And so as we build software, we want to pull away all the manual work that's been associated with these activities for years and allow people to focus on the more complex cognitive tasks at the front end of the SDLC to make sure we're building the right thing and delivering a high value solution. And integrate the best tools for the job. So taking a suite like Parasoft and you say you've got Jira or uh, Rally or one of the other uh, workflow work management pieces of software, you want to tie them together because if we don't integrate software, we're just moving the manual work and having people copy things from one system to the other. And so the, often that'll mean bringing in an integration hub or uh, where, where there, a native integration doesn't exist. And again, this is valuable because you want to build a best of breed software delivery solution if you're really going to differentiate your organization through software. And last but not least, this is me soapboxing. It's just a charge. Let the teams engineer the product and the product line. This is key. Work with them to help them have the right engineering line to deliver the right software for the organization. Manufacturing has known this for years. The engineers engineer the product and the line. The same is true as software because it is now a competitive differentiator for all our organizations. And you have to do this before the first line of product code is written because without the line you can't deliver the code. So thank you very much folks for uh, listening today. I hope this has helped set the stage for the talks to come and also given you some ways to think about how you might build a leaner, meaner, modern SDLC with automated testing at the heart of it. So I wanna remind you on my, as I close out here, those three key steps, reimagine your SDLC, take testing out of the end and put quality in the middle of your SDLC and think about how do you stop doing manual work like writing testing documents or copying and pasting things between systems and truly build an automated test suite that becomes the source of truth for what's working well in your systems and target that optimization and automation where it matters most. Most Certainly getting the end-to-end uh, -end work management flows uh, tied together, building an aut automated testing is key. But beyond that, look at your own SDLC, assess it, understand where your biggest bottleneck is. Resolve that first and move on from there. So thank you very much for the time today. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and Arthur will relay them to me and I'll get some responses back to you. And without further ado, I'll turn it back over to my friend, Arthur. I'll take off my hat. So he's the center of attention. There we go. Ah, <laughs> <laughs>